Good afternoon. I'm outside, so you can expect the sounds of nature and whatever else is around me to potentially interfere. Hopefully this setup allows you to hear what I have to say today because I believe it may be the most important thing I've ever really talked about. And I've talked about a lot of important things. And all of the things that I've spoken about, they find their way through your life. And where you have figured out a chunk and a space and how to deal with a specific thing, you can apply what you've learned in Christ. But as you look around us, and as we go through this, what we're living today, it's become very clear and becomes more clear every day. The deception that the enemy has placed upon this world from long ago is now showing its fruit. It's a little late, I believe. There's two harvests, one for the wheat and one for the tares. One's a fiery harvest. And one is meant to be eaten or utilized. Now, how you translate that will determine how you understand what I'm about to be speaking of. Because right now, every single one of us feels that we are fully justified to be as angry as we feel. And you know, there is Gnostic texts that have Jesus saying something quite different, or Yeshua, quite different than what you read in the Bible. Now, what does ruling over all mean? Because right now you and I feel fully justified in the anger that we feel. Now, the reason why I feel that anger is not because I can place that anger on any one single person. There isn't. There's not even a single entity. There's not a single situation. There's not a single anything. The enemy has divided himself into so many pieces that you can't point a finger. You just identify it as evil, evil. And that's why that is so prof profound when you understand what evil is. It's just the only way you can describe it. And yes, it makes you angry because we know what people are about to face. And from what direction they will face sorrows, pick one. Pick one. But we have to be different. I received a comment on a TikTok video of a Marine saying, how does an ex-Marine handle this tyranny? How does he respond to it? I think the specific word was. And how are we to respond to it is not how I personally have been feeling lately because I've allowed that anger to rule rather than me ruling over that anger. And as a result of not having a finger to point at, I found things to point it at. I personally did not like anything about how I was becoming inside and I realized that I was going through that and I had to see this in me so I could tell you about it. We cannot have that anger in our heart. We can be angry. Yeshua was angry. It speaks of him being angry. However, how he responded is the difference. So I want to explain to you during the course of this conversation 
why this is all happening and why Christ said, you see all of these things, all of these things. Do not let your hearts be troubled for all of it must come to pass. And for me personally, because I've had it happen to me before, I've had authorities come and take everything, family, possessions, everything from me. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to be accused and not guilty and convicted and not guilty. And I learned how to live with people that I didn't necessarily like and they didn't necessarily like me. But I learned a peace in that place and how to maintain that peace in very difficult spaces and in very difficult circumstances. And I watched other men learn from me and they inspired me. And that's what we need to do today. We need to look upon ourselves as prisoners and start acting like we do in prison, respecting one another, lest you start a war, loving one another, lest you kill someone. Because see, what they're doing in this world right now, everything, I'm not gonna name anything specific, all of it, all of it comes down to an ultimate control and the destruction of everything you ever thought, destroying what you've depended on, ownership of things. They're coming for all of it and for good reason in their minds. Doesn't mean it's good, but in their minds, it is so predominantly necessary. That's how they see it because of who is coming. You see, when Christ was warning you about an antichrist, well, this is it. And that Antichrist is going to be something else. Um, whether constructed or authentic and real, let me say that. Whether constructed, operations, technological uh, means by which they can do amazing things that we're not aware of, or by actual coming of somebody because we cannot deny the ancient texts of the Sumerians, or as some see them as the Anunnaki. And it is very clear that there is evidence that they are returning, like I said, either constructed or by real means. They are preparing the world for that arrival, whether they construct it or whether it's actually happening, I'll leave that up to you. But they're preparing for that. And as a result, to raise them up in such a way that would honor their coming, they will put orders on who you need to be and they will extinguish who they need to extinguish, period. You need to be ready to serve that God. End of story. They are preparing you to serve that God. And what they are going to welcome that God with is a burnt offering the likes you've never seen before. Look what we've done for you. How many we have sacrificed on this altar for you so that it was clean before you arrived. Here's the difference. What is clean? And who are these gods? They're certainly not my father. Christians, you say, this is not our home? Start acting like it. Understand Christ. Because this is where he said you would be here in the future and that meant that many will do greater works than these that I've done. You better stand in the shoes of Christ and pick up your cross because most likely 
you won't be the one that they're going to keep. Do you hear me? You will not be the one that they are going to keep. That means picking up your cross, not being guilty of any of those crimes, nothing that they convinced you to do, not guilty. I'm not guilty of any of them because they are a construct of theirs. And the enemy led them here and then led us here. Your crimes are not your fault unless you stop doing them. And that means stop now. Stop hating and respond in love and respect to anger. Do not let yourself be angry. Allow anger to exist, but learn how to rule over it. And I'm saying this to you because it's to me as well. And that's why I wanted to come here transparent and say, man, I was angry. And I am. I'm angry because of what people will go through that don't know Christ, but they'll still be cleansed too because they'll just be called a patriot or something, but have a lot of hate in their heart. And that is not going to fly. The situation is becoming grave in this flesh and in this position. More grave every day. But we must find a way to stand in love, rule over our anger, and pray for those that persecute us. Because I can tell you one thing, folks. All the exits are closed, except the gate. It's a narrow one. And I promise you, few find it. I'm going to continue this discussion on a live show so we can have some interaction and I can answer some questions in real time. Um, I'd also like to try to um, have some Zoom time and some Zoom conference on it because I believe it's important to be able to discuss this and talk about this with uh, amongst one another and particularly right now while we have the ability to share these things amongst ourselves because before long we won't even have the ability to do this or communicate or even telephone anyone and um, we'll be existing on ham radios which I suggest that you get and uh, at least just for listening in if not talking just for getting information getting news real news because you're certainly not going to see that anywhere else and that grip is going to become extremely tight. I still have RenewTube.org, which we are going to be propping up much, much bigger. So go to RenewTube.org. Um, those are videos that have primarily been pulled by uh, all of the different platforms. But for me here and uh, Global Witness, it's going to be not focused on what is going on out there in the world. It's important that we know where we're at and timing wise. So pay attention to it from that. But if it's impacting you and causing you anger, don't pay attention to it. And you can always rely on this place and space to be um, a message that is how to respond to those things, but not, but not about those things themselves. Because there is really only a place that anger comes from in two different places of spirituality or the physical or the spiritual in the spiritual anger comes from sorrow because you want to be able to intervene on somebody's behalf that is being harmed and in the physical anger derives from fear so when you fear something, you become angry. You fear that you're losing your country, you're angry. You fear that you're losing your way of life, you're angry. Look, there is some very angry people. And we need 
not be one of them. Because those are the people that are going to need us the most. Because everything will be crushed that they know. And the only place and the only strength that they will be able to recall and anyone left will be you. Only you. And that is a special job. It is the highest of order job that you can have. And it doesn't mean that you have to do this and reach tens of thousands of people. Just find one, just one. Help them, raise them from the dead. Open the eyes of the blind, help them see. Cure their sicknesses, because they most likely don't have any. They just believe they do. Ah. Uh, everything we thought was true is a lie. And the revealing is going to reveal a lot. The revealing is going to reveal because it's all coming down at the same time. It has to. The revealing will be who God is of this world. You're going to find that out. And that's going to destroy many, many people's minds because they'll know it to be true now because they were told it's true in a very profound way. They were shown it. They didn't have to be told what to think. They were shown it. And they will be shown. And then there's also going to be the revealing of who all of us are and who each one of us are, actually are, in what we know. I'm not gonna get into that right now. That'll be during that live show, possibly during the discussion. Uh, and I wanna talk about during that discussion, the, um, the things in me, boy, I did not like. And it came out to people that I love. It came out to Malia, it came out to others that in hindsight 2020, I'm starting to see it more clear. But I had to go through it to recognize it so I could warn you at how subtle, how subtle this creeps up. Now I have to consume this information so I can then talk to you about how to, how to respond to it in Christ. And if that's my job, I certainly cannot have anger in me the way I've had it. And so you won't be able to have anger in you if you are to help others. They're going to see the love of Christ because they won't even be able to understand or comprehend how you don't have hate. These gates are closing quick. They're sealed. You've got one gate. I love you very much. And I really hope that um, that you find this message in your heart and that it quells some of that hate and anger. I uh, want to send that to you today and thankful for all of you that send it to me. And I encourage you that if you have these things, Confess it, because then no one can accuse you anymore for it. Confess it, say it, be accountable to anybody else, someone, another Christ. Be accountable, say it, confess it, because then when the accuser comes and says, 
you had all that hate and anger in your heart. You go, yes, but remember when I confessed it and repented, which means turn away and stop being angry. Stop having hate. Stop it. It's a choice. I encourage you to choose life and love. I'll see you soon on that live show. Yeah, it's a narrow gate and few find it for so many reasons. Billions vaccinated, but now the tyranny and the things that we see taking place. If you understand Christ and what he was doing, you'll stand as he did. And some didn't like that. They wanted him to rise up and destroy the Romans because they were the oppressors, just like we have today in the new world. But you can't. Those that endure in the peace of Christ. Because see, Satan needs you to go hurt somebody. He needs you to commit the crime that keeps you here. Die to thyself and live. Folks, before I end this video, there's been a number of things that have taken place. Just um, videos sent to me via text while I was editing this and rendering this. I've uh, rendered this video now, uh, or started rendering this video three times and stopped it three times because I needed to add something else to it. And um, again, that's why I'm having this live show coming up. And I don't know exactly what day that's going to be because I still have some things that I'm putting together for that. And um, we will do that then. But please, watch this clip. And I'm just going to sit here and Listen. He ain't playing, guys. He's dead serious. I have seen way more than any one human probably should ever see in a lifetime. I, I've seen more than I ever even dreamed of seeing. Why this was showed to me, I, I don't know. Whether it was just to scare me, to wake me up, or what. Because I wasn't living right. And I was probably the biggest sinner on this app. But if it was just to wake me up, I'm going to use it to wake y'all up. Because the severity of what we're face, facing and what's coming, guys, people, you just don't have any idea how bad it's fixing to get. You don't. And I'm not trying to scare y'all. I'm being as real as I can with you because I love you. But if you're into any kind of wickedness or unrighteous acts or, you know, sexual immorality or whatever, get away from it. Put it down, repent, get right with God. Because when the line of Judah comes back, he's not coming back for forgiveness and give mercy. He's coming back to kick our ass, all right? I love you guys. God bless you. Get right.